in history, where would you go? Hmm. I kind of like, to be honest with you, I like this era. Right now? I, yeah, no, 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 not this era. <laughs> I was born way out of my time, way yeah. out of my time. Oh, I, I'm seeing a Phillips doing this. Oh, sorry. That means, hello, hello everyone <laughs> in the interwebs. Welcome to ATI's Lunch Break with ATI. My name is Don Farrell. I'm one of the co-founders of ATI, and I'm here with the lovely and talented Diana O'Halloran. She is playing uh, the role of Jeannie Douglas in the world premiere of Mr. Confidential, which, open, which opens this Friday night at 7.30 at the Studio Theater at the Center for the Performing Arts in Carmel, Indiana. And we are thrilled to have her with us. Thank you for Thank having you. me. We were just talking before we got the cue. Where would you, if you could go back in time, what part of time would you want to go to? What was, what was, what was your, you never got to answer um, that. I, I haven't really it? thought about this. I think that the 1920s America would be... Like, 1920s? Yeah, yep. really interesting. Yeah. I guess the Great Depression wouldn't have helped that. But mm -hmm. I like the flap. I, I enjoy, like, the aesthetic of, a, like, a flapper girl. Mm -hmm. So I'd like to experience that. You know, maybe not, like, the hunger and being poor. That would be Yeah, great. that would be kind that of a downside to it. Yeah. Um, but I think from, you know, from an outsider's perspective, for a hundred years on, it mm -hmm. looks like there were some glamorous bits to it. Yeah. I am an internal optimist, and <laughs> I love to keep hope alive that our time right now is the best ever. Yes. But I if like I that. did have a choice to go back to another <laughs> era, I think I would want to go, I don't know, I kind of like, um, hmm... I'm just more of a throwback guy. I mean, the music that was back in... I, I did like the, the 20s. Yeah. That was really great. I yeah. love that whole... I love Cole Porter. I love mm. uh, Noel Coward. Yes. I love... that. That's kind of a that kind of sophisticated type of very yeah. jaunty, uh, yeah. the lyrics of it, the fun. But at the same time, you know, they're... The 80s were fun, too. The 80s seemed cool. Like, any time that was just, like, just before the internet, uh -huh. I would like to experience it. Yeah. I just want to see how people communicated before yeah. screens came in to like save writing us. Like, writing letters. Whatever happened to that? God, Actually, that. opening the mailbox mm -hmm. and receiving somebody's letter it's that they actually so and. Funny. Wrote mm -hmm. in cursive, by the way. Yes. Which is, are they teaching it now? I don't, I don't, you know what? I What's said, up with that? I was about to say no, but I, I have no idea. I mean, I, I remember so. being taught cursive. Me too. And, and I it was remember like, I have the crooked finger from oh. the pencil. Did you? Oh, Do yeah, you yeah, that? yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> so when I looked down, I'm like, oh, my kids probably won't have that problem. No. <laughs> but think about it this way so get your kids to learn how to write cursive because. It's almost like a secret code. Nobody can understand what it is anymore. Yes, and it looks so nice. <laughs> it does. It? It's like sexy writing. Mm -hmm. It's not sexual. It's sexy. Yes, it's very, like it flows. Mm -hmm. It flows so well. It's really pretty. It just, it's a classy, it's a classy way to communicate. Mm -hmm. We should bring it back. I think so. Everything old is new again. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. speaking of everything old and is new again, even though this is a new musical, Mr. Confidential, it's about something that happened in the past, 1952 mm -hmm. to 1958. Uh, Bob Harrison, who created Confidential magazine, um, uh, inspired by his lovely counterpart, his, his, his relationship, special significant mm -hmm. other, Jeannie Douglas. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but uh, yeah, the really kind of cool listening to all these stories that were going up back then. Even what uh, Samuel Garza Bernstein, who's uh, directing the piece, but also uh, the playwright, um, it created these amazing props of the confidential magazines. I was looking mm -hmm. through them and reading the actual articles of some of these fascinating it's bananas, stuff. Bananas. It is, isn't it? Isn't it? Yeah, yeah, I haven't had a chance to look at though. I mean, I've seen the cover mm -hmm. and even like reading some of the, the headlines that are in the, the backdrop of the, the show. You can't believe it's real. And even some of the things that we get ourselves into in the show mm -hmm. are, um, you know, you sort of think that you're, you know, acting and it's all pretend, but there's actually happened like going off to the jungle getting shot by commies things like that it's just so funny that it actually happened in real life mm -hmm. and we get the opportunity to to bring it back and you know entertain people with just like two hours of it has a, it has heart to it yeah for sure mm -hmm. and there's definitely a moral compass to it but there it's just two hours of silliness with 
some of the best music oh. I think that I've ever It's so much fun sung. to sing, isn't it? Yeah. Yes, and it just it feels really good to lean into that type of music. And yeah. I think that'll bring a lot of people back to a different era. Like even, you know, from the overture, you know, you just you're kind of sent back to the 1950s. Yeah. And that's also another a decade that I would love to go back oh, and yeah. revisit. There was a lot of turmoil, of course, mm -hmm. civil rights and everything else that was going yes. on at that time. But the Rat Pack, the that kind of classy mm -hmm. swagger that yes. comes with uh, sophistication and knowing how to uh, handle yourself. Mm -hmm. Guys and gals being, you know, dressing up, you know, yes. and going to the nightclubs and listen to the music. Grab and a sandwich. People it's are looking so much, so <laughs> nice. Uh, David Snyder, the composer, and uh, who also amazing orchestrations. Um, so much fun to sing and yes. listen to. Yes, it totally. The music puts you right in that era. Mm -hmm. So in a way, those who come to see the show, and I hope if you haven't gotten your tickets, you can get your tickets by calling 317-843-3800 at the Center for the Performing Arts, or you can go to atistage.org. Um, like I said, we open this Friday night. We close on May 14th, so eight performances to be able to catch this new world premiere. Mm -hmm. um, but those who uh, experience it, they're gonna, have a, they're gonna get this feeling of a new story, but there's something that makes you feel like you've experienced, you, you, you're, it's familiar to you, but it's that familiarity that you are kind of wanting to have again. Like, yes, you know, yeah. um, it I harkens know. back to a different era and it, you know, it makes you feel kind of warm and fuzzy, mm -hmm. uh, in a, in a lot of different ways. Like for me, if I could talk about myself. For yes, a please do. Please do. Um, one of my favorite albums growing up, um, was Natalie Cole's. Oh, um, yes. So Nat King Cole's daughter did an album um, of all of her father's music. So it was just all of that like jazzy 1950s era big band music mm -hmm. that I feel like raised me in a lot of ways. So I feel like this um, this musical takes me back to that feeling of like not being in the 50s, but being there anyway, and just really loving that music. And it's timeless music to where, like, even if you weren't into it before, you know, you you will walk out of this show with a song in your head, yeah. or you'll just remember the feeling of, you know, these these big jazzy numbers with these, you know, I love the the chord progressions and the way that David Snyder wrote this, this score is unlike anything that I've ever experienced as a performer. So, um, it's wonderful to sing, but I think it's also just wonderful to to watch and you know take a second to be transported back to something yeah something different. So. And it's nice when there's tunes, new shows, brand new songs mm -hmm. that are hummable that mm -hmm. do stick with you. Uh, yeah. There was that whole thing in the you know between Stephen Sondheim and then there's up for the Tony, and then it was Jerry Herman that won, and it was because it was more hummable tunes. Or something Jerry mentioned, I think, in there. The hummable tunes are not dead in Broadway or something like that. And it was so controversial. But there's some truth to that. People yeah. want to be able to have a hummable quality of, of something yeah. that kind of sticks with them. Yeah. It's like a good story that sticks with you, that you ponder as to what you experienced a little beyond those two and a half hours yes. or whatever it is in the theater, uh, that time in the in the space. So yeah. so tell me about your journey. You've, got, uh, you've been... you. New York City. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah back you were in the um, day. back in the day. Do you have bio of it? Well, yeah, I oh, do. Yes. I got your. You were at the York Theater Company <laughs> in New York City, Manhattan School of Music. Great school of music, by the way. It what years were you? School. When were you in New York City? Um, so I moved to New York right after high school. So uh, I went to went to school at Manhattan School of Music. So. Um, I went to junior high and high school here in Carmel and mm -hmm. was really into show choir. Mm -hmm. like, I, was, I don't know why. I mean, I was so show choir it. here in Carmel, Indiana, <laughs> I don't even know if anybody even deal. gets involved in that. Oh uh -huh. my goodness. Like the ambassadors are mm -hmm. incredible. The Essence yeah. ambassador, like everybody in that program is just so wonderful. So that kind of started me into this whole performing life. And I, you know, at 16, I was like, I, there's nothing else I really want to do. So. Um, yeah, so I went to Manhattan School of Music 2004 to 2008, um, and I like I did okay auditioning, but you know, with like any actor, there comes a point where you're like, you know, you want you know a more stable life. Sure. So it's sure. actually kind of funny because I, I took a, a break from performing for a while, and then 
my husband's Irish, and so we moved to Ireland. Oh, we love the Irish here. <laughs> Sorry, David, that's a really bad Irish accent. He's Pardon probably me. watching right now. And just David, how you doing there? Totally Come watching. on, let's go get a pint. A pint's of pound the whole world around. That's spot on, John. That's spot <laughs> on. <laughs> well, my last name is Farrell. Yeah, yeah. So you worked on it. Ah, yeah. 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 But see, David's like, your husband is like the cool Irish. Yeah. I'm like the little leprechaun. Oh, no, yeah. Come on, let's go. Down. You're cool Irish, too. <laughs> So, yeah, anyway, so we were living there for a while, and actually, I kind of got a little bit of an Irish accent when I came back to So, do you America. pick up accents when you're around people with other yeah, dialects I would, and stuff? Yeah, I would do that, yeah. yeah. Like, even, like, I lived in North Carolina for, like, four years. Well, I was born in Carolina. Sometimes oh, I yeah. say, oh, Carolina like, has in a, different a southern type. way. Mm. Like, I haven't lived there in ages, but there is something about, like, being from Carmel, Indiana, with an Irish accent, and people know you from when you were 13, you can't do that. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I try to curb it when I can. But when I'm, when I'm around my husband, yeah. it, it definitely like comes out. It's like who was who's the star that used to do that? Oh, I thought was it was it Madonna? Oh yeah, it was she Madonna had, when yeah. she was doing was mm -hmm. it Evita or something? She picked up this other. It's like, who she's are from, you? She, she's from. That's Michigan. not. But yeah. you, what? I know. I know. You don't want to pull. See, like they us. were calling you like you like Madonna. Yeah. They, what yeah, is she doing? Basically like it's Madonna. Like, who does exactly. Diana think she is? Exactly like Madonna. You're right. <laughs> um, so I, I, you know, I try to like kick that to the curb for a bit. Uh, but when I was in Ireland, I, you know, I was like trying to be a recruiter, like all these corporate jobs, and I was like the world's worst recruiter. <laughs> oh no! I'm a good actress. It's like, like oh, I'm hey, come to well. Nah, you don't really. Want yeah, to. <laughs> really. I'm like I'm like honest to a fault, and so. <laughs> I had all these jobs that I knew people didn't want, and so I was just terrible at like <laughs> convincing people to take the job. So anyway, I ended up working in a music school in Ireland. Oh, cool! Um, which was really fun, and it was a, it was the first time that I was able to just like we would you know stay after work and just sing. We would sing standards for hours, you know. And it was the first time where I was like, oh, I can't believe like I didn't do this for a long time. Mm -hmm. And so that kind of got me back into to singing and teaching. And I feel like I really got back on that path. But mm -hmm. I'm also like, passionate about teaching voice. And so that sort of, you know, brought me back into the arts. And I'm so happy to be back in Carmel where you can be an artistic, creative person and people are so supportive and there's always fun and exciting things going on. And I think that's just, a, I feel so lucky to be here right now. So I feel like I'm a supported artist in a lot of ways. And that's mainly a lot to do with you, John, because do you remember, I like slid into your DMs on Facebook like three or four years ago? <laughs> I do remember that. <laughs> you, but the, I think that's like, that's a prime mm -hmm. example of Carmel because you were working at Feinstein's or you were mm -hmm. singing at Feinstein's. Mm -hmm. And I had like done a concert in my backyard and I was like, hi, <laughs> can I do that too? But you were so nice and um, welcoming and you gave me all the information that I needed and you were super supportive. And I didn't even, even when I did my first submission to ATI, I didn't know what I was doing. But, you know, I think it's great to be in a place where, you know, the community is so strong and they support the arts and even like new um, new writers like Sam and, and David to be able to put something on and, and have people be excited about it and fund it and, you know, have people wanting to be in the show. I think that's a really rare thing. Um, and it's a beautiful thing. So I'm excited about this show. We are too. Yeah. We are too. Uh, <laughs> it's been a long time because you were also part of the, we have something called the ATI Theater Lab, which helps promote new stories and a new uh, playwrights and in the case of musicals, uh, composers, uh, in the creation and evolution of new work. And so we did that in February of mm -hmm. 22. And uh, and you were in that production as yes, well in a yeah. different capacity, mm -hmm. different role. Yeah, um, yeah, which you did that role marvelously Thank as well. Thank you so much. Thank marvelously, you. that was fun. Uh, and now to to go into Jeannie, mm -hmm. um, uh, how looking at the two different roles? Do you what have you? What did you enjoy? Because originally she was with mm -hmm. Marjorie, yeah. and then now as Jeannie. Yeah. Um, what the going approaching the same material? Yeah with two different characters. What was that? Yeah, Talk about it, that. It's actually been, I find that I I can relate to the character of Jeannie a lot more than I could have related to Marjorie. So the two mm. main characters, Mar Marjorie is this just like firecracker of a woman. She's a go-getter. Not that I'm not these things, but like she was, she's 
um, can be was a bit unfeeling in the way that she pr pursued her career, mm -hmm. and I felt like I couldn't really like relate to that so much. And whereas I think Jeannie is, you know, she's she's softer. She's a little bit more meek in a lot of ways, and um, I I think that. I'm able to see the arc of the show a bit better now that I know I know both characters and mm -hmm. I know their experience. Mm -hmm. But Jeannie was just a really easy person to become for me. Um, I, I, I can't really explain it, but I just feel like it was um, like the music feels really good to sing. And even hearing Shelby, who plays Marjorie, is the girl can I, sing. The girl is really good. Girl can it. sing. She's very good at singing. She's mm -hmm. very good at it. <laughs> um, but I, I, it's almost like <clears throat> this. This part was written for her voice. Mm -hmm. the, the way that she sings it um, makes me feel like I'm so glad that I didn't even go for Marjorie because she is Marjorie, and I think that Jeannie, in a lot of ways, feels like me. Even the way you know, I have this this song that I love to sing called "The Girl with um, Yellow Hair." Um, which is one of the last songs in the show, and it just feels really good. You know, it just sits in your voice, it sits in my voice in this really easy place where it just feels really good. And I feel like I can, can connect with the audience when I when I mm -hmm. sing the song because it's just you know there's there's so much happening in the show, and I feel yeah. like this is a song that just brings everything down, and I I can feel the energy of people. You know paying attention and really come into this character with me. And I think that's such a, a cool thing to experience. Um, and I wonder if, we'll have to talk to Shelby about this too, because she also has so many like firecracker songs in the mm -hmm. show, if she can feel that same energy um, with her with her character too. But it's just been, um, it's been great to really know the show inside and out because I played two characters, yeah. you know, it's, really thorough study of <laughs> Mr. Confidential. So, you know, the show means a lot to me um, in a lot of ways, but also because, you know, I've been able to be um, both of the leading ladies and sure. kind of seeing two sides of the two sides of the spectrum. Well, you're also not uh, unfamiliar with new work because mm -hmm. you also were in the original off-Broadway production of Witness Uganda starring Leslie Odom Jr. and Titus Burgess. Talk yes. about that experience. What was that? I never saw Witness yeah. Uganda. Yeah. But I'm fascinated. Of course, that's a historical piece. I'm, yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, talk about working with those guys. The um, at the time, it was too. you know it was like one of the first um, one of the first shows I did out of college, and at the time, I, this sounds silly, but I didn't even know who they were. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, they were kind of on their way up they too. Up I mean, like, like, yeah, they were up and they were up and coming, but I I didn't really realize like the gravity of like working with people, yeah, um, you know, who were that successful or were going to be that successful. Um, but I do remember something about working with them is they were just incredibly positive, and I think that that is something that you should take with you. It, you know, as an actor or any person who's trying to pursue anything, yeah. They had this unrelenting positivity about the work that they were doing. Um, and same with the, the writers of um, the show, Matt Gould and Griffin Matthews, who wrote an incredible story. Mm -hmm. um, so, and I just, I remember that being like a key takeaway. And mm -hmm. I remember there was just, before we went on stage for one of the productions, um, there was this like huddle beforehand and we were just kind of like being you know like talking about the our experience with the show and what it meant to us and I remember you know I was 23 I didn't I felt kind of out of place I don't know if you've ever experienced that as an actor like when you're first starting out just feeling like do I belong here am I good mm -hmm. enough to be here and at that moment I felt not good enough to be there um and I remember Leslie came up to me afterward he was like why didn't you say anything why didn't you like participate, you know? And it, that actually um, has stuck with me a lot, being like, well, you know, maybe regardless of whether or not I felt like I belonged there, I should have just gone for it. And so um, with every production that I've been in since then, I've mm -hmm. just been like, yeah, that's we're going I, 110%. <laughs> good, yes. Yeah. I think that's a great lesson to share. Yeah. Um, regardless, it's a collab, the process is collaborative. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> and I mean, sometimes, I mean, every process is different and some yeah. are more collaborative than others. Uh -huh. But I think, you know, everybody is 
quote a show that Leslie Odom Jr. has done in the room where it happens, Ooh, right? There we go. <laughs> um, we're all in the room where it happens. We're all contributing to this, and everybody is an integral part, no matter how large or small mm -hmm. your part is. You mm -hmm. play a key factor in telling a story. Yes. And we're yeah. all part of this. Yes. Some people have more of that story to tell mm -hmm. just by the number of lines they're given to say or, or songs to sing. But that doesn't make them more important than anybody else who might just have a bit part walking on. Yeah. And everybody is, you know, and to your point, too, about, you know, you never know where the people are that you're. I just did a, a, a Zoom master class with mm -hmm. a, a college yesterday before our call. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, one of the things that I'm telling them and this because I experienced it and I think everybody can they forget that when you're in the moment, when you're just taking class, you're just looking, you're just thinking of class. Right. But 10 years from now, those people sitting next to you that you would go to lunch in the in the cafeteria with or whatever, what are their careers going to look like? Mm -hmm. It's going to be amazing. And you're going to go, oh, my gosh, I can't believe we used to sit in the cafeteria yeah. together mm -hmm. and look at what you've done. Look at what I've done. It's 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 about that. Keeping yeah. the positivity about it. Don't yeah. be a jerk. Don't be a You'll jerk. You'll work once. <laughs> at that theater and never again or whatever it is, you know, you want to, you know, and I think that that's a great thing about the art form itself and, and the industry and theater, live theater specifically, that it is, it's very welcoming, no matter yeah. where you are and no matter how experienced you are, you can still learn something mm -hmm. from somebody who's just walking in right from, yeah. from college. Yeah. You know, there's always something to learn and to evolve from. Yes, so. yes. And it's it's just inspiring, I think, to see in any show that you do, to see what your colleagues go on to do, you know, yeah. whether it's, you know, being in a Tony Award winning show or a movie or, you know, mm -hmm. other shows in the area. Um, you know, I always feel I, I'm a person that always puts other people on a pedestal in a way. Mm -hmm, and so mm -hmm. anytime I see somebody in the show, even if I know them, I'm like, I can't believe I know that person. Sure. But in <laughs> the morning, we like? all put on our pants the same way. Well, you know? I don't know. Do we? I don't know. Never, yeah. I'm sure I, I'm sure if you saw me put my pants on, it'd be like, wow, that's a weird way. Of that's on a your weird, pants. you know, you know, it's a new technique. <laughs> That's what makes the world go <laughs> around. <laughs> anyway, well, but, thank you, yeah. guys. Thank you so much no, for spending for some of your time. We've got a call later on today. Yes. Thank you so much for spending some of your lunch time with ATI, with Lunch Break with ATI. We look forward to seeing you at the Studio Theater. Uh, again, Mr. Confidential opens this Friday night at 7.30 p.m. And then we close on Sunday, uh, uh, May 14th. And uh, then after this, we, we gear up for a reading of a new play called Rosemary in Time at the Carmel Clay Public Library that will be done on May uh, May 20th, Saturday, May 20th at 2 p.m. at the Carmel Clay Public Library. You're going to check out Eventbrite. You'll find out how to register for that. It's all free to attend that and come and listen to a brand new play that's being worked on. That's how, a that's how Mr. Confidential came about. It came through the ATI Theater Lab. Our next one is May 20th. And then after that, we bring back, by popular demand, for two nights only at the Palladium, Million Dollar Quartet. And tickets are selling like hotcakes to that show. Also for Mr. Confidential, all three. You, want to, you don't want to miss it. We're going to have some good times with a lot of a variety of different stories to tell. But until next week, we hope you guys take care, and we will see you at the theater. Have a great day. Bye.